Hi, welcome. So my name is Jan Jongboom. I indeed live in the Netherlands. It took me 14 hours on an airplane without in-flight entertainment to get down here. So sacrifices, you know. Um, I work in Telenor. It's like AT&T, but then Norwegian. Uh, we're a big telco, and they pay me to work on open source. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so in the past two and a half years, I've been mostly working with Mozilla. I've been a peer on the Firefox OS project. We've launched phones in Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia. Um, and lately, I've been like focusing my efforts on anything related with the real world. Internet of Things, robots, yesterday I even built a rocket, like, come on. Yes, it went up extremely fast, and it went down like even faster. So. <laughs> but, you know, like the fact that we're in this incredible ballroom with so many developers that are all getting excited by like playing with bots, playing with rockets, playing with ships, I mean, that excites me, man, because it is one of the best times to be in technology at this moment. We are on the verge of a new era. <laughs> when, I, when I learned the program, uh, like in the 90s, like if you wrote an application, if you wrote a computer program, it essentially meant that like it run in this confined box. If there's input getting into the computer, you did it like over your keyboard, and then when it came out, it came out of the display. I mean, this is no longer the case. Like, the new programmer is, is going to do this, like having a button and then like, hello Jan, is going to do this with like a real breadboard, and with a button, and like an LED that flashes. You cannot imagine like how incredibly happy I was after I got my Arduino starter kit, and I wrote some code that made an LED blink. You know? Like, I was like this, you know, like showing my mom, like, hey mom, you can type in your name in your computer, and then it like spits your name back out. And I've been not been as, as enthusiastic as that about like computers in a long time. And now finally, like doing all these hardware things, that is what like, like gets me totally into this. So we, we can take our code out of this confined box and into the real world. And this is, this is a revolution that is just getting started. No, we're, we're, we're nowhere near yet. We don't know what is going on or, or how, is, how is it going to end up. But like looking at like all these extremely smart people, one thing I know for sure, and that this revolution is going to be led by JavaScript. <laughs> um, I can imagine that you guys are also incredibly tired, like three days of like full-on action. So today we're going to... We're gonna have like a, a fun, nice demo full talk. We're gonna have audience participation. Yes, real audience participation, isn't that cool? And we're gonna have a fuck ton of GIFs, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk to you about today is computer-generated music. Uh, a lot of the music that we listen to today is for a smaller or a bigger part, is already like kind of coming out of a computer. Like your drum loops might be recorded, you might sing something in and then like add effects to it on your PC. There's like a group of people that take this one step further. And that's people that do algo raves. Now for me, this is, this is like the nerdiest thing, but it's like, nerds are like taking over the world. Like really. Like, a computer guy standing in front of an audience, like live coding, and then people start dancing towards that, man, shit, that's... <laughs> <laughs> so like three years ago or something, like Alex McLean started this, uh, started this movement, and last year at JSConf Asia, I met uh, a PhD from UCSB, Charlie Roberts, who made a JavaScript environment for algo ravers. And it's essentially an online IDE with a DSL, that allows you to write code and, and like make people dance to that. It's like for electronic music. So let's say that I want to make a beat. All I need to do is A is drums and then press the beat. Can we put it a bit up? Now that's 
like basic is pretty cool. I mean, like it took me six years or something to like get this out of a normal drum kit, and I can do it one line of jazz. We can also add like a little pitch to it, so you can like like play around with like variables. Sounds pretty cool. There's like a lot more you can do, like vocoding. So for example, here is like like our own jazz comp song. Now, if you look closely at this, then you actually see that there's like a whole number of variables in this code. And these are parameters that directly influence the music. If you set the pitch of the drum, we get like an actual different sound. And like for programmers, this is amazing, you know? If you're standing there in front of, of an audience, you can like play around with the parameters. The only thing is like it's very static. You know, once you pick one, it's that's basically it, it that's that's what it's gonna be. So then I then I thought like what else do you see at concerts these days? Like way too much. Mobile phones. And mobile phones are now pretty good at like capturing what's happening around you because mobile phones have sensors, 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 and sensors. <laughs> so Today we're going to do a nice little experiment where you guys are going to help me produce some music. Because we're going to use the sensor data of all your phones, and I have no clue how, ma how many phones my computer is going to be able to handle. Um, this all get uploaded to uh, a Node.js, IOJS server, and then we feed the data, like the data from all of you together, into a music generating algorithm. So you guys have influence over how the music is going to sound today. Um, I wrote, if you want to like play around with this later, or if you like a cool algo raver, like this code is on GitHub, so you can integrate it. So instead of setting um, a set variable for the pitch, we can get like the yaw of, or, or the pitch of all your phones, and then feed that into the algorithm. So when people like start moving around their phones, music will actually change. Here's a variable. Okay, so that's one. That's one of the demos that we're going to do today. Um, another one. Because your mobile phone is still really confined by like what the sensor can detect, so gyrometer or accelerometer. But now the, we have new things, Bluetooth beacons. I got a number of them here. They're incredibly tiny chips. They don't run JavaScript, unfortunately but they just broadcast their existence. I can put one here on the wall, and for the next two years, it will just say, hey, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, they're getting tiny. This is the new generation of uh, these, the ST modes. They go for $10. Like tiny, small, you can like broadcast a value, like a URL or sensor values. Now, the cool thing is that the ability to detect beacons, to like walk into a room and then see like, okay, there's like 10 around you in five meters, is coming to JavaScript. <laughs> we actually, we finished implementing this in Firefox OS, and we hope to bring it to Firefox for Android, like, uh, on short notice. Half of June, it's gonna come from behind the flag and like be accessible, so have phones that actually run this, and we're gonna do some demos with that. Um, how you scan for beacons, it's pretty straightforward. On the MOS Bluetooth thing, it's not standardized yet, but in the, in the web Bluetooth standard, we're talking about implementing low energy support for Bluetooth. So this is also coming like to the standard track. We can get the adapter, start a low energy scan. In this case, we're not interested, we're interested in all the devices around us. And then when a device is found, we get an event. A couple seconds later, we can stop. Um, the event you get contains a scan record, and that basically is all the data that you send it. Most things currently follow the iBeacon standards from Apple. And that gives you three IDs, essentially. A UUID for a manufacturer, a major, and a minor. Um, so that's how you can like, detect which beacon is what. Now, what are we going to do with this today? The JavaScript baby monitor. So you're going to tag... <laughs> we're going to tag a baby with a phone. <laughs> then on the phone, we run some JavaScript that constantly searches around for the beacons. Then based on how strong the signal is, we're going to triangulate from the three beacons with some math, and that way we know where in the room the baby is located. 
Um, now you might think like tagging a baby with a phone, is that really necessary, Jan? Um, at JSConf EU, I presented a project called JanOS that allows you to rip apart the mainboard of your phone and like tag your baby with that instead, so you can make like a child-friendly device. I'm not going to talk about that today. Like, le let's see how this looks like. We have a baby. We position three beacons around it, and then we tag the baby with a chipboard. <laughs> now, we basically know like how far from the beacon we are because we get signal strength. So if we combine the data from three beacons, we realize that where these like intersect, that is where baby has to be. And then when the baby like runs away, then we can start doing an alarm. Pretty simple, right? All in JavaScript. So, demo time. If like if you're on the JSConf track A Wi-Fi network, then get yourself over to 192.168.157.18, port 9321. Because that is where the magic is gonna happen. So um, what you're gonna see in your screen is essentially a dot. And this dot is getting influenced by the way that you like rotate your phone in physical space. So I'm going to go to my command center. So here we have all the people. At the moment we have 10 people connected and we're getting like the data from all the phones, averaging it, and like the way that you pitch it uh, is dependent. And then based on that we can make some music. So if you hold your phone like this, we should be able to like go exactly in the center. Okay. Um, and now I want to like move it like to the left top corner. So draw it, like change your phone like in physical space to the left top corner. Man, there's so many people connected now. <laughs> so one person is like doing it. Like get get over there and like like see how the music changes. You feel how the music changes a little bit. Like depending on like how high or how low. The thing is, like we have we have echoing and pitch, and it's always hard to do audience participation in this thing. It's crazy, right? So my server is completely going berserk on this. <laughs> um, I I can I can show you how it works with like just one person because this is totally not how I thought it would work. So I'm connecting myself to my own network, and then go to the page. Okay, so now it's just me, and when I move it, you can get like pretty, pretty rad effects out of this. At some point you can echo it so bad that it like starts beeping, it's not fun for anyone. Now, this is just one thing, we can also do this with, uh, with visuals. So, now when I move it... So based on like how high the thing is, the BPM is dependent, so now it's like nice and relaxing. And if we move it all the way over here... We change like how the music like feels. More rich or faster. Pretty cool. Like with all these people it would go even better, but I didn't test it more than 10. But now we have the BPM, so what we can now do is add some extra magic to it. So here's the code that I have. Let's go full screen. Um, essentially what we can just write is like get a drum sequence, then the amplitude is like based on data that we get from the phone. And the BPM is based on other data that we get from the phone. Now I made uh, a thing that, that parses a GIF and then can dynamically like change the speed of the GIF based on like how fast the music is playing. 
And, and now, now kind of like it a little slower. Or we can like go and make completely crazy. <laughs> Right, so that was what that was the music thing. I'm gonna let the let the music play a bit, and then I'm going to set up my uh, my beacons. So let's say that this is the area. So let's say that this is the area where the baby is allowed to go. So I'm putting uh, a light blue beacon here. So I measured this before. It's like a bit over three meters, which is in United States measurements, I think like 81.4 stones. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three here. And now let's go to the right page. So this is where the data is going to come in. I'm going to put the phone here just to make sure that we're getting the data. Um, zoom out a little. Whenever the data is now coming in, it will redraw. So we're connected, and data should start flowing in. So as you can see, the, the, how big the circle is like depends on where I position the phone. So now we're just waiting for the data from the Mint beacon, which is the one here. Um, it really varies at this point, and that's because we get like the raw value, and the raw value is really dependent on like a lot of factors. So we can buffer the RSSI, and then it will slowly, then it will like remove all the drift, and we get like a better positioning. We can also like draw the intersections, and based on that, we can get the, the average. So if I move the phone or baby to, for example, here, um, you can see that like the actual position that we detect like is actually getting there. If I start moving the thing around, luckily enough, babies are not very fast, so it's okay if it like takes a couple of seconds. If I'm moving it here, then you'll see that the position of the orange dot will start to change. Um, we can now do this, and like, if the baby gets out of the bounding box, then if the baby gets out of the bounding box, we can sound an alarm or like do something about that. So we're here, and now you see it like you see it moving towards the the purple one. Now I figured like, okay, that's pretty cool, but what if you could like listen to baby-generated music? So we're going to open the baby thing, and we're going to apply the, um, the data that we get out of here, like the position of the baby in a physical space, and feed that into a music generating algorithm. <coughs> so the idea is that like, whenever the baby is like, in this space where it's allowed to go, then like everything is alright. I mean we don't really have to play like big ass crazy music. Have we do we, have we got a visual on the thing? Okay. But now what if the baby starts to escape? You know? That'll be disturbing. For some reason I don't have mint yet, so I'm gonna restart the application with phone. So when the baby escapes, we can change the BPM of the music like a lot. So hey, we need to check out something because crazy stuff is happening. So here we go. So relaxed. And let's see if I uh, run away fast enough. If we can. That's the thing you take because the mint one just uh, stopped working. Okay, go, 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 go. Like, if necessary, just go to the pizza guy. Right. Oops. 
See? Okay, music, yeah, fast. Like, we need to, like, act on this shit now. Thank you. All right, let me close that thing off. Um, and get back to my slides. Now, we have 10 more minutes, you know? And I figured I always wanted, like, a real, like, one more thing moment. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I've been working on Firefox OS on like a variety of platforms, and now we're like focusing on the Internet of Things. The thing is, Firefox OS is not just about phones anymore. It's about televisions, tablets, like things that can run it. But we also want to like bridge a gap to the physical space. And for that, we invested in a number of technologies, including blow, Bluetooth Low Energy, virtual reality with uh, Firefox VR, but also uh, WebCL, which allows you to get a video stream and start detecting stuff on that. And from that premise, we started thinking about, like, what if we would design a wearable running Mozilla technology? And, if, and we figured that the beacon stuff would be incredibly useful. Because if we, for $3, can get, like, a beacon, like, straight from the factory, and tag that at, like, interesting places or tag it to people, it would allow us to like augment your reality like based on where you physically are in the world, walking around. Of course, it also has to be built on open standards. And today, you guys are going to see the very, very, very first wearable that Mozilla has been working on, like right here on JSConf, like a couple minutes before the end. Freaking exciting. So the first wearable that, that we, together like with Mozilla and a bunch of partners, have built is Mozilla Glass. <laughs> and I, I got it with me, actually, here today. So we looked at like, what other wearables are around at this point, and we, we had like a number of, of things that we required. So first of all, we we wanted to work with any type of glasses. Prescription or sunglasses doesn't really matter. The, um, the prototype that we have here is mounted on the glasses that you got in your goodie bag. Uh, I mean, it's the availability track, or what the company is called, and the glasses were from the same brand. Um, we also want that it be a standalone product, no extra device required. There is voice control to get like information without like always looking at your screen. And the self-built self kit is going for about 300 US dollars. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. First thing, Mozilla Glass, hand-built by me. So what we see here, and I got one with me, we're going to demonstrate in a sec, we have a camera module on top. <laughs> on the left, we have the display and sensors. Um, the, uh, these two talk with each other over a WebRTC connection to get the data from the camera into your corner. And then we have a small little mirror in the, in the inner side of your glasses, so you can like, look a bit to the right and get the image from your display on the left. All right, so um, for this, for this next segment, I need to have uh, Steve Kinney, Jacob Rufa, and Chris Williams on stage because they're going to help me with this thing. So, guys, run up, run up, run up. All right. Um, where the hell are my beacons? Oh, here. Hmm? Oh, you're going to be Chris Williams, okay. So, um, I need you guys to like, okay, we're, what we're going to do is, um, it's like a party, you know, here. And like these are, and I want to know like, who do I have to talk to at parties, you know? I want to be like the, the cool guy that like, always knows a subject to talk to and people think you're interesting. What is going to do today? So let's say that we tag all these people with beacons. Um, Steve gets ice, Thank you. Jacob gets blueberry, and you get mint, and I need you guys to like, be like a bit socially awkward and stand by yourself at a party. So, the, <laughs> like not too, not too close to each other, please. Now, yeah, a bit like, 
like near the stage, please. <laughs> um, I'm going to go to... Uh, so the beautiful thing is because of the WebRDC that gets off the, off the camera, we can also get like a live feed here up the, up the screen. There we go there. Mozilla Glass. Uh, as you can see, we're not connected to anything here. I am going to put the phone here. This is going to be my uh, camera client. Hmm? So here we go. And here I got the glasses. Let me just verify that uh, we're still connected. Yeah, you know, hardware is a lot of fun. I'm so hoping that on Twitter, like, like people will like go completely crazy, like Mozilla introduces a wearable. <laughs> Uh, so we're connected, I don't see any beacons yet, but that is going to come. So I'm going to place this on my head. Um, I'm going to connect to my camera module here. So uh, I, I ran out of duct tape. <laughs> um, so the moment that I connect to this thing, we should start seeing a video stream here. Okay, so here we are. Now, of course, we have voice controls as well. And for... Ah, wait, that is. So we have voice control as well. We partnered with Andreas Gaal, the CTO of Mozilla, to um, do the voicing. I wanted Brendan Eich, but he said, as Taylor Swift. Um, do you guys get a stream here? OK. So let me full screen this thing. Oh. You know, it's pretty hard to see with these glasses on. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay, so back to the thing. Okay, so here we are, back on the stream. Um, need to have some sensor data out of here as well. Would be nice. Because now I now can ask my voice assistant to come up on stage. <laughs> uh, hello, Andreas. Can you introduce yourself? Hello from Mozilla Glass. I am Andreas Gao, CTO of Mozilla. <laughs> um, because we, of course, also care about like uh, other companies that are working in the same space, um, like Google. We have sorry. I you now I really need to get some assistance. Um, I mean, I can say, Andreas, call me Google. Okay, Google. <laughs> isn't, isn't that nice? <laughs> um, all right, can you start the... Fuck. This... <laughs> this <laughs> you know, this worked so well in my head. Do you need a hand? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, so... Yeah, you can, you can hold them on yourself. <laughs> so we're going to get the video stream back at this point. <laughs> I mean, it looks pretty good on you, like, to be honest. Um, OK, so now let's, let's do the augmented reality thing. And I want you to walk over there. Where do you have the beacon? So this is uh, supposed to be, uh, OK, so get a bit closer. You need to be like in close proximity. I mean, we're at a, we're at a party here. Um, so, wait. So whenever this works, this is like always a good thing to have like a backup uh, glass, not mounted to like real glasses. Uh, <laughs> so here we go. Steve Kinney, information. This is augmented reality, guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, now, and as you can see, the moment that we walk away, like in, immediately the information disappears as well, and we can do this the same thing with uh, Jake up here. I was hoping somebody would come talk yeah. to me. Oh, that would be nice. So what can we talk about with you today? 
Hey uh, man, how's it how's it going? You? I, it's it's going Hey Jacob. Well, right? uh, <laughs> you know, we can <laughs> talk about the cure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Christian. Or if we can talk to Chris Williams, like, you know, everyone knows him. And go go go. Hey uh hey Chris, um uh, what should I do with <laughs> the drone battery? Oh, well, you know, like Oh, hey. Hi, it's me, Chris Williams. <laughs> I just thought I should mention that you might want not want to put that drone battery in your checked luggage. But right now, <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Um, so we can also tell you, like, based on the voice commands, who you're near. Will do. Oh. You're not near anyone. So I'm not near anyone. Or, and this is like the coolest feature, it can also shoot laser beams. I'm sorry, John. I'm afraid I can't do that. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Here's the thing. We cannot predict the future, you know? It's, it's 2015. Where the hell is my hoverboard? <laughs> Actually, after like yesterday's event with the note copters, we decided we no longer want hoverboards. We want quadcopters or like drones that can carry people. Like way cooler. <laughs> We can't predict the future, but one thing we know for sure, and I hope that today's demonstration, even though it was a bit flaky at times, um, is like a demonstration of that. And like the whole JSCon thing, and this is like the thing you have to like take home from all of this. We can't predict the future, but we do know that a large part of that is going to be written in JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, my 30 minutes are off, and I really, really want to thank you all for being here, and thanks for such a great conference.